Hello everyone, Kirith here and welcome along to another Gran Turismo Sport video and this is the big one. The finale of the Club 100 Esports League and look at that table, look at the names, Esports Drivers, GT Academy Finalists and Super GT Steve Brown. Only two points in it going into the last race between myself and Super GT. That means it's a head-to-head -head battle at Le Mans. Who is going to come out on top? Super GT on 66 points, I've got 68. 25 points available to the winner and I'm starting in second place Super GT is going to have to come back through the pack from 10th place I'm going to guide you through this race it was an absolute epic and the context was so huge I mean for me to even be in this league is massive very very privileged very lucky to race against these drivers here and to be close for Super GT going into the last round just has blown my mind he is the GOAT he is the best GT Sport YouTuber out there the OG and what a privilege but we're going to kick off now with the race. I've got the points on the left-hand side there. It's going to be a live update for you. And 2TC for me on the line in the Corvette. It's a Mustang on the left-hand side in Martin. And I get a really good launcher off the line, actually, in the Corvette. Let's have a look. Yeah, Martin goes defensive in that Mustang, pushing Tim Clark to the pit wall. That's going to mean they're three abreast going into the first couple of corners here at Le Mans. Tricky corners at Le Mans. Difficult to do even when you're coming in at full pace. When you're coming off the grid, it can be really troublesome to actually work out when to break because the track limits at Le Mans are just... This race, track limits are going to be a major feature here. And I think the track limits at Le Mans in GT Sport are unlike any other track in GT Sport, especially the corner coming up, Treacher Rouge, where normally you want to really nibble that curve. But I believe the track limits here are actually the white line instead. So you'll see people giving it a wide berth. But early doors in this race... We're in first place, and behind us we've got Super GT's teammate, it's Jack Cameron Dayton, in the Quadrant Livery Corvette. He's going to push me long here. Jack will want to get a good result for his individual season points. And you can see on the left-hand side, Super GT moving on and up. Now in eighth place, following Roswald, following Trevisier. Some very fast drivers there, but Super GT is on the move. But I've got a teammate, not teammate, it's not really the right word, I've got a wingman in Jack here. We might want to work together. Jack will have seen what I did at Monza when I was able to start in first place and just keep it for the whole race and bring home those big points. He might fancy some of those as well. You can see he's dropped off a little bit, but the slit screen is so strong. He is going to come back, and that gap just keeps coming down to Super GT. He's up seventh place, picking up more and more points as they update on the left-hand side. Trevisio has been dispatched there fairly early doors. See Nathan's moving up as well. There is a battle for the ultimate championship win going on as well between Roswald and Nathan. So we'll see how that goes. Luke Battersby now in eighth place. He is incredibly quick, quick at this track. One of the fast drivers in the game, Luke Battersby, so one to watch out for, for sure. See Jack here giving me those bumps, giving me those extra speed as we go into Mulsanne. Very tricky corner, especially in iRacing, racing, but also in GT Sport. Don't want to go too far over to the left-hand side. It's very easy to spin the car. As we keep it in first gear, probably revving out first gear a bit too much, but that might be the nerves of this position. At this point in the race, I'm really trying to get into a rhythm, trying to settle myself. It's not my best track in GT Sport Le Mans, but I should be okay at it. I shouldn't necessarily be worse than anyone else, because I don't think it's a heavily used track, especially in GT3 cars. I'm not sure it's ever come up with a GT3 car in a daily race combination. But I have done a couple of iRacing endurances here. Two six-hour races with basically and Rory Alexander in Team Rock. As we go around, very tricky corner, that one. The braking on the entry is very skittish. And if you turn the back end, it's very difficult to save it without going into the gravel. See here, Jack still in my slipstream. Now, this is going to be a critical moment in the race. Super GT has already moved up to fourth place. So that is an incredible first lap from Steve. And going into the curves here, Jack Cameron Drayton is behind me. Now, I had worried that I'd broke too early here, but if you have a look, Jack Cameron Drayton just, I think, forgets to break at all and goes into the gravel. And if you have a look at the leaderboard on the left-hand side, he's going to drop like a stone. I think he went quite deep into the gravel. And that's not good news for me because I've lost my wingman and I've lost someone to push me down the straights. So if the people behind me work together, they will be able to make up that ground. Now, at the moment... It's 3.3 seconds to Cal 401. Callum Brule, very fast driver. Been my closest rival in each of the three seasons I've done in this league. We've always finished very close together when it comes to the end of the season. So it'll be nice again to finish ahead of him if possible. 
but he's got a Super GT right behind him now in third place. Unbelievable charge from Steve there, coming from 10th to 3rd on lap 1 at Le Mans in this grid is, I can't really put into words just how incredible that feat is. That is really not easy. I don't know how he's done that. I'll need to have a little pack as we go through the first couple of corners at Le Mans. Really trying to avoid that track cut. Don't want to get a penalty. Although I do remember thinking at this point, hang on, in this position in the race, I'm out of first place. I've got a comfort zone of about three seconds. Maybe this is a point to take risk with the track cut. Maybe this is a point to just barrel through Tepe Rouge and try and gain a couple of tenths. And if I get a track limit penalty, it's not the end of the world. We can try and burn it. I didn't really know how to burn the penalties here. But um, like most other tracks, usually just breaking a little bit earlier into the braking zones means that you do burn that penalty. Right, Cannon behind, less than three seconds now. I'm sure there'll be nose to tail. Will they work together or will they fan out as a three here as they come to the first chicane on the Malsan straight? I don't know. I was on the team radio encouraging them to fight. <laughs> they weren't really buying it, so I had to switch to negative reverse psychology in the end. And there we go, Super GT has made it through already into second place. And look at that points difference at the bottom left. It is really close now. And remember, if you finish in first place in this championship or in the season, you get 25 points. If you finish in second, you get 20. So that's a big difference from going down to first and second. So there is going to be a dog fight at some point if he wants to get past. Going down the Mulsanne straight into the second chicane. I find this one a little bit more tricky than the first one. Sometimes I can kind of squirrel on the accelerator and really make it tricky for myself. See here, going down second gear. Not going to first, not a first gear corner, keeping a second early upshift third. Fourth, another early upshift into fifth as we go purple, but it's a fake purple on the second lap, everyone will be going purple. Rudswell behind now in second, 2.4 seconds, so they've taken about half a second out of me fairly early doors. You can see it's a 30 minute race, times free tyre wear as always in this feature racing championship. And we are six minutes into the race in first place but losing time now, now we don't have the wingman. Could be quite important. You can see there, they look like they're working together. Interestingly, Callum and Roswood are in the same team. They are going for the team championship win, which I believe was still up to grabs in this race. Super GT has lost his teammate, Jack Cameron Drayton. That would have been very interesting if Cameron Drayton has still been here, how that would have played out with Steve. And I'm on my own. My teammate Sam, for anyone who's wondering, he was karting with Club 100 this day, so couldn't make the race. So I'm the only Frey Bintus Racing factory driver in this race, but trying to do the team proud, trying to do you all proud with a good result here. YouTuber Pleb in first place in this league race. I've no idea how it's happened, really. When I started racing in this league, I was very much near the bottom. But I think just racing with fast drivers is one of the most helpful things you can do, whether that's in sim racing or in karting. You just follow their lines, you get the confidence to break where they break, to turn in where they turn in, almost automatically. It's a real shortcut, I think, to getting faster. So we're going to the push curves again. Really nice bit of racetrack this, especially in the LMP2 car on our racing, but also pretty nice in the Corvette on GT Sport. As I go really close to that wall, probably just flick it down to fourth gear here. You might be able to do this in fifth, but I do it in fourth. This is the most painful bit of it, the exit here just absolutely painful for track limits i think i might just have kept it inside yeah no penalty for me we'll see next time we look back if anyone else got a penalty there is a penalty there in the background someone did run a little bit too wide and get that penalty and just absolutely smash into the chicanes here no regard for the curbs whatsoever and uh, trying to get a good lap for me a 55 would be a good lap and that is a 55.6 so that is a good lap for me with no slip actually probably about as pretty much as well as I can do actually so Luke Battersby with a 353 that will be slip assisted no doubt but Luke Battersby going more than two seconds quicker um, he is very quick at this track much quicker than me so he's one to watch out for in this race coming back through the pack and already Super GT now only one second behind I need a good exit from Tetra Rouge if I'm going to maintain this gap less than a second now very close to the all important seven tenths that is the slipstream window as we go through Tetra Rouge. No penalty, I believe. We did maximise track limits, penalties for cars behind, though. Very, very close, but you need to be, because if you don't maximise the track limits coming out of Tetra Rouge, you will lose so much down the Mel Sound Straight, getting fresh game. Really, really brutal. 
Let me know in the comments what you think about the track limits at Le Mans if you've raced here. Are they too strict? Should other tracks in GT Sport be like that? This track, I believe, does treat the white line as the track limit, not the inside of the kerb, which is uh, more true to form for real life racing, but can definitely catch you out. And I've actually gained a little time on Super GT there, so not too bad through those corners. And I'll need more of that. I'll need as many good combination of corners here at Le Mans if I'm going to keep this gap, maintain the distance, because if I lose three or four tenths, I'm going to get swallowed by the pack. And there's two drivers of the same team there, so they'll be able to control what's going on. They might be able to deploy Cal to disrupt things and let Russell go for the win, because I believe Russell did need to win this race in order to win the championship. It was really close between Russell and Nathan and really close between myself and Super GT. Two battles to watch out for as we're going to head into Mole Sam. Very tricky corner. One that you can really gamble trying to be late on the brakes and trail break it round the apex and little green bollards on the inside you want to get as close to them as possible but if you go too deep there's no saving it the gravel is right there let's see how we do pretty close on the power nice and early but the gap is closing not as good as super gt's exit he's gained at least a couple of tenths of me he's going to be very close to being in that magical seven tenths window and getting that slip starting to increase the gap now maybe a slightly better upshift or something really tricky set of corners coming up here how late do i dare to break lifting a little bit on the brakes now going to go down to second gear try and get really close here on the left hand side don't run too right wide on the right managed to open up the gap there let's see on this exit a little bit of oversteer that's not too bad in the corvette you can just plant your, your foot and it will it will bite but still so close to 7 tenths in fact that got really close uncomfortably close and he's in super gt is in he's breached the walls he's in that 7 tenths slip window and he's going to eat me up now you can have a look how close the gap becomes once the driver behind you is in the slip stream and uh, very messy for me through the push curves sliding the rear about that is going to cost me later on the tyre wear tyre 3 tyre wear it was a big issue at Monza definitely hurt me at the end of the race was I was doing my best to hang on to that win but Super GT is definitely in now so this is going to be interesting a little bit of a different dynamic to the race going into the final chicane got to reset myself and refocus we're not going to streak away in this race and get to the checker flag alone it is going to be a dogfight Five tenths now, so not too bad for that chicane. And that was a pretty decent lap for me, actually. A 355 with no slip. So I'm driving pretty well for me here. It's just not quite good enough to fend off the very quick driver's pine. Sometimes that's all you can do. Maybe a bit more practice. Well, definitely a bit more practice would have helped. But we are where we are in this race. And Super GC is at the gates. Only a couple of tenths behind. I'm sliding the car a lot now. Probably panicking a little bit to be honest and just not driving subconsciously driving consciously as we go through Tetra Rouge it looks like a nice line but amazingly it's a one second penalty and I was absolutely amazed this was a one second penalty and that is a huge moment for the race I have a decision to make and I think I think I choose poorly here because I decide to burn this penalty here rather than defend and here you can see as we break a little bit early quite a bit early and try and burn that penalty so we're going to lose a position to Russell as well just slotting ahead of Callum though and that's a critical moment because I didn't need to burn that penalty I, I could have kept it and burnt it later but we made a decision but the penalty in the first place I want to see if I can pull up a slow motion replay here let's have a look Yeah, exceptionally close, exceptionally close. I must have crossed a white line, but it was very close. And trying to catch up with Roswell and Super GT now, but crucially, I, I'm going to be out of the slippers. I have a very poor exit here. I do go over the white line there, so I am going to get a penalty for crossing that white line. Surely, yes, there we go. Half a second. That means I can't overtake. So Callum is going to go past me here. 
Not a bad thing though. All we want to do is catch up with those two ahead. That is the name of the game right now. We just need a couple of tents. As Roswald and Super GT fight going into Mulsan. Roswald's going to come out ahead. And trying to do some mass in my head. It looks Callum is probably just out of the slip right now. So he needs me to assist him and just give him a little bump draft. But I've got another penalty to lose. So really race critical moments there, getting those penalties and I think making a poor decision to burn it. But we're back in back in the hunt. And if we can bridge this, it will be a four and it'll be hard for Roswell and Super TT to break away. And I don't think Roswell will want to break away because he'll want Callum to get as good a position as possible. So the more he can dra drag Callum along, Callum a very fast driver's own right, but Russell probably the quicker driver in that team. And Russell needs a good result for the team to pick up the team championship against, I believe, Nathan and Marky Boy. Let's have a look. I think Callum is still out of the slip. Now, what's going to follow here is some of the most intense driving I've ever had in GT Sport because we had to throw everything at it to close that gap and that meant driving nose to tail through a really fast part of the track look how close we are just giving that bump we need every hundred every thousands of a second possible to bridge this gap look how close we are I think I just go a little bit too deep on the exit of, of the next corner as we touch the grass we are really on the edge and it feels like I've lost a lot of time but actually I've only lost about two tenths that's just how close and intense the racing is but I'm feeling good about the race at this point. Callum's looking good. I'm looking good. Roswell at the front. They're dicing. So I feel like we can bridge this. It look, visually, it's very close right now. And I made the decision not to burn another penalty like that. Just seemed to do more harm than good. Roswell CPTT going around the first couple of corners. Surely Steve isn't going to send it on the inside. No, he isn't. But he's very close and actually almost looks to the outside so Steve really I think wants to break away here he must have really good pace backing himself you can see he's now 10 points ahead I think I've updated that just to put Super GT in first place um, because they are clearly battling for that position now key moment here as Cal just runs a little bit wide I did gently nudge him going in but I don't think it was enough to run him wide I think Cal just kept his foot in it and I had to lift off as well and another critical moment there as I go wide on the exit of Tetra Rouge. I don't bring the car inside and I'm going to get, surely, yes, another half second penalty. But it has brought Luke Battersby into play. Batters, he was all the way down the grid, eighth place fairly recently, last time I checked. But he's already up to fourth place now. And probably the fastest driver at this track. Really not a bad wingman to have here. What's he going to do? Is he going to go for a move? No, he backs out. Let's me take the first chicane as uh, there's been another change of position in the lead. Super GT going past Roswald. Batters is now out on my slip, but I'm not worried about it. He will catch up. I'm checking back to see what the situation is. He's got Callum for company as well. I've got this 9 tenth penalty, but 9 tenths? Yes, 9 tenth penalty. It feels like a new phrase. But if it comes to it, I'll burn it at the end. It will prevent me from overtaking. Well, that, that was the understanding of the rule but it was just a bit of a gentleman's rule. I did suspect it was, it was not going to work at Le Mans because the track limit penalties are so sensitive. That one second penalty I got, the first one, did seem extreme sensitive. The second one was absolutely fair game, so is the third one. Caught red-handed for those. And uh, let's see if Batters can get a good Mulsan and catch me up. I'm not going to be driving slowly here. I'm going to be driving as fast as I can. Just waiting for batters to catch up. 1.5 the gap, Super GT and Roswald. We need to bring that down. 12 minutes to go, so only only a few laps to go already in this race. I feel like race at Le Mans go very quickly. It's just one of those tracks. Batters still a second behind. And Roswald Super GT going up to 1.7, so I'm in a bit of no man's land here, but Roswald going into the inside. Not really the cleanest overtaking. Um, place on the track so it is going to cause a slowdown surely especially going into the left hander let's have a look at the delta Russell goes a little bit deep and yes looks like we just got a couple of tenths back again they might be a bit slower going through this right hander very tricky right hander very tricky nine racing as well and yes that gap has come back 
from 1.7 to 1.3, so I've taken four tenths out of them. If I could have taken four tenths out of them when they were second ahead, I'd be back in the slip. Just shows how close these races are. Batters nine tenths, eight tenths behind, and they're going side by side ahead. So again, I'm feeling good about the race right now. My pace seems to be holding up. Somehow we're in third place in this race, which I can't believe, but I'll take it. And the gap is now 1.1 seconds, so the momentum is really with me. Can we get a good, good exit out of the left-hander here? See the car pitching as I really try and turn it in, asking the tyres to do too much. Super GT gets half a second penalty, so really maximising some track limits. And Luke Battersby is in my slip now. So we're going to go over the line with about 10 minutes to go. And the cavalry has arrived in Luke Battersby fastest man on track is going to push me around yes he is a little nudge there. does he back my pace we will see we both got a penalty I believe so I think it's fair game to overtake when you both got a penalty definitely but again this this whole rule about not overtaking when you have a penalty I think more of a more of a gentleman's rule um to just you know keep things in check but Le Mans it becomes very difficult because you do get these track limit penalties so quickly 1.5 the gap now needs to be a good tetra rouge let's see what we're going to do but we'll have batters on the straight this time and it doesn't look like Roswell and Steve are that interested in working together here we go 1.3 is the gap we get a bump early doors maintaining that gap at 1.3 creeping up now to 1.4 we will probably get another bump from Luke Use the force leak. And you can see another gap starting to come down. 1.5, 1.4, 1.3. So go into the braking zone. Super GT with the half second penalty. I've got the 0.8. Luke Battersby has just been burning. Hasn't burnt the whole penalty, but has burnt some. So Batters is going to back himself to get back in my slip. That is a, a key moment for the race as well, I believe. Because if Batters hadn't burnt that penalty, we might catch up with the slip sooner, if that makes sense, because we'd be working as a team down here as Super GT and Russ would fight again. you love to see it. Super GT taking the lead. And, uh, yeah, I make a big mess of this corner. As we end up burning penalties because we're so slow. I'm not sure we're going to get a trap limit. We did get a huge amount of oversteer there. So Luke is going to get past. Fine. Not really too important in the scheme of things. As long as we can work together. Going into Molsan now. I could try and burn this penalty. Are we going to try and burn it? Yeah, I do. I break early. Nothing really happens. Okay. That's a bit worrying. Because <laughs> I've got eight tenths to burn. Although Luke has a second and CPGT. It looks like I've got 0.3. Callum behind, one, point sec uh, one, one second even, 1.1 seconds. He's got a penalty as well. Looks like Callum's going to try and burn it rather than joining this group and making get a three as Super GT and Ross will go side by side again. And I'm lifting off, seeing if that doesn't think burning the penalty. It doesn't. Breaking really early here, trying to burn the penalty. Absolutely no dice. So I cannot shake this penalty at the moment. Will we break early here as well? Yes, a little bit early, nothing happens, although that wasn't really, I'll say, breaking early enough to, to bear the penalty. Callum catching up, nine tenths. If we could bridge as a three, that could be a pretty powerful slip train down the Mel Sound straight. But we'll see if Callum decides to um, try and burn that penalty some more. Side by side between Roswell and Super GT, going round <laughs> the Porsche curves. Incredible move around the outside. As uh, we're trying to follow Luke Battersby and not lose the slip. See, so the tyre wear is starting to get a little bit more significant for me now. Probably haven't looked after them as much as I should. There's going to be no penalties for any of us there. Keeping it very tight on the exit. you love to see it. Wish I'd done that a bit earlier, probably. The, the penalties have cost me, but not in the way I... They... I could have mitigated it better, I'd say, getting that penalty out of for Rouge by just um, maybe defending, maybe not giving up the positions so easily, maybe not 
burning the penalty. It's a bit like uh, Max Verstappen in the first race of the 2021 season when he was he overtook Hamilton off track and immediately gave the position back. He didn't force the stewards to make a decision or anything like that, and maybe that was a lack of a ruthless edge from me there by trying to burn that penalty so quickly. Definitely learnt my lesson though. Won't be trying to burn this one off now. We will just follow Luke Basby band. We are still in that slip of the fastest driver on track. So, driving pretty well for Le Mans. Tetra Rouge, here we go, onto the straight. Going to be any more penalties? More understeer. I go wide, bring it back in. That's not going to be a penalty for me. That's pretty tidy. Let's see ahead. Any penalties? No. Clear on the penalty front. So we are all maximising track limits to the theoretical maximum. It's a way of saying the same thing. As uh, looks like we are going to try and burn this penalty, actually. So I'm going to go to the outside. Signaling to loot that I'm going to break a bit earlier. And we burn, 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 burn. Burn it down to 3.58. Okay, that does minimise it quite significantly. Losing half that penalty. But are we going to be in the slip? We've lost the slip. And I remember saying on the team radio at this point that... Things I can't repeat for this video. <laughs> but saying that was not a sensible thing for me to do to uh, jump out of the slip and I think Luke lifted off a little bit to let me back in so we can work together to catch the front two so he's um, thrown me an olive branch there thanks Luke as we go around the second chicane third gear down to second gear understeering a little bit but tidier than previously now that was pretty close to the kerb is that going to be a penalty for me nope no penalty okay no penalty. I was over the white line, it seemed, but on, back onto the curb. It's, I don't understand trying to Le Mans, to be honest, in GT Sport. <laughs> if I did, I wouldn't have got the penalty. Side by side ahead, looks like Super GT has burnt that penalty around Mulsanne. Wow. So he's burnt it a place I couldn't burn it. Fair play. And the gap seems to be getting a bit closer visually. Cow behind has dropped off massively, so it's not going to be a three way or a three car train to hunt down the leaders but we're, we're definitely with batters now and I'd say we're really catching the front here and we are working together as a nice team here if you are enjoying this video do feel free to drop a like do feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed it'd be great to have you we're very close now to 3,000 subscribers which is honestly a milestone I, I never thought we'd hit let alone in 2021 um, we were only a few hundred subscribers in the back end of 2020 so things have massively grown thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed everyone who's become a member everyone who's supported the channel you guys are all heroes and i think we can do some pretty cool stuff on the channel um, now we're approaching three a thousand subscribers so thank you so much everyone if you want to be part of the journey do feel free to hit that subscribe button it'd be great to have you a super gt in russell go side by side through the porsche curves again and i think for the first time in a long time that gap for myself to the leader is going to get pretty close to the sub to second mark as we just lose a bit, little bit of speed here actually hopefully we can get it back by following batters taking it quite conservative through the exit there I do not want to pick up a penalty at this point and it's already going to be the last lap we gave the start finish line this race has gone really quickly for me trying to smash this chicane now haven't really got a lot to lose i need to maximize it batters using all of the track and then some and batters has, has escaped from my slip he won't be waiting up this time because he really is on a charge in fact it looks like he's going to be able to at that pace catch super gt and roswald maybe before molsan we will see really aggressive line from batters there massively aggressive line Oh, and I pick up a penalty there. So another half second penalty for me. Too aggressive a line for me. But look how close Luke is. And that could mean a, a significant amount for this race. Because if Luke can get involved in that battle, make it a three-way, you could very easily lose a couple of seconds of time fighting, going around Tetra Rouge, trying to maximise it. Pretty good exit. I mean, uh, Luke is only two tenths ahead, but we're probably not going to be able to catch him until they start fighting out the front. Super GT currently 10 points ahead of me in the championship but all it needs to change is a couple of positions for example I think a, a Super GT in second and myself in third would probably probably retain the championship from or the position from me I believe 
trying to do some quick maths. Not sure if that works. Let me know in the comments if it didn't. <laughs> but I uh, wasn't doing too much quick maths in the race here. I was just trying to concentrate. The tyres have really gone off for me, and I'm, I'm struggling to uh, get the grip on the exit of the corners. Definitely losing the back end a bit more. Super GT in second place goes for the lead before the second chicane. It's all chopping and changing, and it looks like he's going to get it up the inside. Some very clean and some very hard battling there at the front of the race. And look how close Luke Baspi is. He's got to be very, very, very close now. And uh, he's my only hope, Luke, really, to get a result now, though, because if we continue circling at this pace, I'm not going to be able to catch up. So let's see what happens. Is someone going to make a move into Mulsanne? Looks like no, it's going to be nose to tail. We'll be up to Roswell now to pick his poison as to where he does want to overtake and uh, trying to time it to not get overtaken again. And here goes Roswell. He thinks about it. He thinks about it and doesn't go for it. Now I reckon Roswell could have quite easily gone for the move down the straight because of how powerful the slip is. But he chooses to not go for it side by side. Side by side and Super GT is still on the inside. It's like they don't want to have the lead at this point. That is very interesting and that means Luke Baspi is really going to catch up now. Very, very close. What a story it would be for Luke to come back from where he was all the way through the pack and catch up with the front two ahead. But oh, we came very close to the end of the race now and the end of the league. Running out of time. And uh, Roswell just really went running out of time now. He'd have to do a brave move around the outside of the Porsche curves probably it's very close at the front meanwhile I'm kind of in no man's land at the moment in the fourth place which in this league is an extremely good result for me but at the moment I'm kind of seeing what's going on ahead I, I need there to be some drama if I'm going to retain my position in the championship but looks like it's slipping away this lap we've been two seconds down as we've struggled to control the tyre wear and maintain that grip the tyre's really screaming now maximising the track limits there getting half a second but it doesn't really matter there's nothing to lose because Callum so far behind us Roswell and Super GT go through the, far, uh, the final chicane and it's going to be too late for Roswell so Super GT is going to take the win and take those maximum 25 points great race of Super GT coming all the way from the back on the charge I'm going to burn the penalty at the line which is probably what I should have done with all my penalties to be honest but yes a fourth place for me in that round I'm very happy with that result I mean to be ahead of some of these drivers Marky Boy Nathan or the, I think Marky Boy parked in the pits quite early on but like some Nathan Tim Clark etc Trevisio huge and in this battle between myself and Super GT I am going to burn into last in that battle which you don't want to be in but there we go there's the final championship table and you can see that race from super gt elevated him to third place and that's after he took a 15 place 15 point sorry point deduction for swapping out of the rc dead to the corvette so that's a huge season for super gt there even with that point deduction to kind of lead all of these drivers battersby trevisio tim clark myself callum brule good to see the, the old battle myself and callum that age old battle ending out on top again i would say um, but Jesse, <laughs> I think maximising the Corvette in the feature race, as you can see, so that Monza result in round one really helped for me and a very good result here. Well, I hope you enjoyed that league. Always a privilege to race with really fast drivers, a massive privilege to race with the GOAT of GT Sport and the GOAT of GT Sport, YouTube being Super GT, and also some very fast drivers here. Do let me know in the comments what you thought about this race, about the championship. Is there anything I could have done differently? Could I have done anything differently here to, to get a better result and maybe keep my position in the championship? Let me know. If you did enjoy it as well, do feel free to hit that like button. Do feel free to subscribe. Great to have you. It does mean a massive deal when you subscribe. Um, the, num the numbers are really important for YouTube to share the content. And the more the content gets shared, the more kind of energy it gives me to, to edit and to throw more at it and just keep spiralling and snowballing. And it's I'm, I'm very lucky to do what I do. So thank you so much, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.